Okay. Now for the fun. I just picked up picked this up today. It is a standing rib roast, about five pounds. Bone in. Got the small bones. USDA Prime. That is a pretty, pretty piece of meat. <laughs> so, now there's two things. One, I'm going to be gone for a couple days, so I'm going to season this now and put it in the fridge for a few days, let the seasoning sort of gather in and, uh, you know, infuse into the meat. And the other one I'm going to cook tonight, so I'll show you that in a little bit. But this one is, uh, I want to do this one a little differently than the other one. I'm going to do this one not sous vide, which is kind of a uh, departure for me, but that's okay. Because, you know, we experiment. We do different things, right? So this is going with salt. This is some smoked sea salt. And one thing that I discovered is you want to be liberal with the salt. And you want to get the salt on all, all the meat. All the meat. All the meat gets the salt. Some of it's going to fall off. I'm also using coarse salt. You don't want to use fine salt because fine salt dissolves really quickly and it gets in and you just can't see it. This at least takes its time and dissolves in over a period of time. I'm going to leave the fat cap on this one because that is going to help get into the meat later when it's in the oven. Garlic powder. like making sure to get it in on the ends. Again, you can skip the garlic powder if you're not a garlic fan, but beef and garlic go together so well. freshly ground, but I am out of freshly ground. I have to pick up some more next time I go to the store. But it is Christmas Eve right now, so that is not going to happen. Uh, most of the stores are closed by now, and I don't want to bother people anyway, because, you know, they should be with their families. They should be having a good time. Except for people that don't have families, so they, they can stay at home and cry, just like the rest of us. I forgot to do one thing when I was preparing that uh, that roast beef, the, uh, the standing rib roast, and that was to trim off the bones and season the inside a little bit. So I'm going to do that today, and I'm going to give that uh, a few hours to absorb some of the spices in and uh, bring it up to room temperature. I'm going to put it in the oven because I have a dog who is very uh, who likes meat <clears throat> and would eat it if given the chance. So I'm uh, going to be doing that and I figured I'd show you how that works and we'll go from there. Okay, so I got one with some shorter ribs in here. That's mostly, mostly good meat, but the idea is to get in behind the ribs. I'm not going to cut this all the way through. You know, a lot of other people will do that. but. 
when I really don't need to. Now the rest of this has been absorbing spices for a few days. Now that I've done this, I want to tie it back up. You can do that with butcher's twine. Looks a lot like this. And I need to find the end. There we go. And I'm going to cut a little bit of a notch in here to house the string. Oops. Knotting butcher's twine is kind of like tying a shoe, except that instead of just doing one knot, do two. Hold tight. Go back across. And make a trim. The double knot helps to keep it from slipping when you tie it so that it doesn't come loose. And what this does is this will help to keep it, to hold its shape and keep it into more of one piece to help even out the cooking. Okay, got it in the pan, got it ready. Now I've got it set with the bones up. And that's largely because this is a big old fat cap right here. I want that to render down into the meat, but rather more than fall off, because I want to get that flavor in there. I'm trying to adjust it like that as best I can. Uh, I don't know if that's going to stay or not, but we'll give it a shot. I want to put this in the in the oven and just let it sit for a couple of hours because I don't want to start cooking this. I want to let those spices that I got on the inside sort of absorb in a little bit more. So a couple of hours should do it pretty good. What they'll do is they'll pull moisture out of the meat and then that will help dissolve the salt and then all that moisture will get sucked back into the meat. Um, that's how the spices sort of travel through the, the meat to make it all nice and juicy and tender and tasty. Piper, sit. On your foot. Good girl. <laughs> and I have both of my uh, my kitchen assistants here. The girls are very attentive whenever I'm cooking. A right. little bit of disappointment. The uh, I could not get it to stand up with the ribs completely up, so I'm just gonna have to uh, live with that particular bit of disappointment. This what I have is a little bit of rendered beef fat from the uh, New York strip roast. I'm just going to add this in here. I'm going to add a little bit of dried rosemary. Doesn't have to be much. All right, what I'm going to do is this is going to be low and slow. I've got the oven set to 250 degrees. And we're going to roast this until it reaches an internal temperature of 115 Fahrenheit. I know that seems low, but after that, I'm going to take it out, let it rest a little bit, and I'm going to crank the oven up to about 500 degrees, and then we're going to put a nice crust on the outside. And that'll bring the internal temperature up to about 125, which is about where I want it for this kind of rare, medium rare roast beef.
to embark on an entirely new experience. Okay, first thing is there's a whole lot of smoke in the kitchen. Particularly surprise me because I hear a lot of bubbling fat. Oh, woof. Yelp. <clears throat> oh, my. Oh, my, my, my. All right, this needs to rest for a while. Oh my, 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 my. Look, I, I'm kind of happy with the way this turned out so far. We have to see what it's like when we cut into it. We're not going to cut into it for a few minutes. We're going to give it some time to rest, cool down, breathe. Oh, the smell. <laughs> there is smoke everywhere. I, it's one of the problems with this method is that there's a lot of smoke that's generated and um, I don't have a really good fan system and it's winter so letting the doors open might actually let me do that. Oh look! Dogs! How did that happen? Alright, anyway. I, we're gonna pick it up again after it's cooled down a little and see how it goes, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Oh, so pretty, so pretty. This is the result. I've got 
this much that is prime meat that is uh, roast beef that is some of the most amazing hmm. oh lucky dog oh look honestly this is some of the best roast beef I have ever had I won't say it's the best prime rib because I don't think this is prime but mm. flavor oh oh my god I'm gonna have to do this again preferably for a larger crowd oh so good so I have this for the fat rendering I'm gonna do more of that and uh, take it into this pan not gonna do it tonight I'm, I'm quite happy with how this turned out oh 